And here, Ryan Ferries and Sam Grabner. For Ryan Ferries, he is six and one in matches today. Sam Grabner, four and three, but really cleaned house yesterday. Yeah, started with a nine and zero oh day one. But Ferries will be on the play by a better overall record, and starts off with Monastery Swift Spear. I mentioned that these one drop creatures a lot better when he's on the play, and looks like he'll get some extra hits in as the turn the play here was Aether Vial for Grabner. Yeah, and Vial is a little bit weak in this matchup, certainly on the draw. You need to get creatures on the battlefield quickly. This is largely a racing situation. Lava Spike and a hit from Fairies, but no second land. It means it's an opening for Grabner as he's down to 14. And plays Thali as Lieutenant and Champion of the Parish. Chooses that's to split things up to make both creatures two twos. Oh, that's a neat. Okay, yeah, you can split. You can vial in between the triggers. Yep. Could have had a one one and a three three. Right. That's actually really smart on Sam though. That one one, I guess one and a three three, a lot worse against a Searing Blaze. As yes. Ryan does draw the land for the turn. Turn late, but it'll still play. There's a fetch being cracked before combat. If you're Sam, you really don't want to see a Searing Blaze here. Well, Ryan seems like he knows what's up with Burn. If he kept this one lander on the play, I feel like we're going to see a Searing Blaze. Deckless are face up. Yep, and there it is. Takes care of, well, it doesn't really matter, but he'll go for Thali <laughs> as Lieutenant. Yeah, on the table, I, killing the Lieutenant actually can matter just because a Phantasmal Image can have a bigger effect copying that one. Yeah. Thrabner's down to nine. Interestingly here, we what I think Ryan has to be thankful for is that that turn to play was Thalia's lieutenant as opposed to Thalia. Thalia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. For Gravener, though, he's going to miss a land of his own, just passes. You know, that means that both players are full up on spells. The thing about that is from nine, Ryan's spells end the game very quickly. Yeah, a swing with Swift Spear, and Gravener immediately says, I'll block. So Lightning Bolt upstairs, Gravener's down to six. Swift Spear will prowess to a two, three. And because Sam didn't cast a two-drop this turn, I'm not sure he's going to vial in one either. Yeah, he just didn't have anything to pump up that champion, and it got eaten in combat. His hand is all threes. He'll tap Aether Vial, however. Looks like he drew a third land, but it's Horizon Canopy, which, well, okay. <laughs> that one's not so good in the matchup. Looks like he have a response to Aether Vial. That response is Boros Charm. You don't want to have, I guess if he has two copies, Meddling Mage on it is a thing. Uh, okay. Or was that, that was a Vial was on three. three? I don't know. That doesn't really make a difference then. Yeah, Fairies also showed a Lightning Helix in hand, and I think that's enough, and Brian Fairies is going to get the first game. Yeah. Pretty quick affair. Yeah, these ones are going to be very consequential early turns, but they're not going to go late. Ryan's playing Burn. Right. So with that, three minutes in, we're on to the sideboard. Sam Gravener will be on the play. We have Sin Collectors, Gut Shots, Oriok Champions, Is It Static Casters, Selfless Spirits, Kataki, Reclamation Sage, Phantasmal Image, and Dismember. Now here's a matchup where Oriok Champion's pretty good. Absolutely. A lot of creatures to block, creatures entering the battlefield, gains life. That's good stuff. Yeah, real no real way for Ryan to remove it ever. Uh, assume we'll see those in. Yep. The three Sin Collectors are also quite good in the matchup. Yeah, any way to make Burn discard a card that doesn't cost you life points is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I like those. Uh, you have any thoughts on a card like Selfless Spirit in this matchup? It doesn't really undo the damage from any of the spells you care about. I suppose it blocks against Searing Blood. Right. But uh, Searing Blaze is that weird templating where it has two targets and doesn't have to kill the creature or have the target that it was a creature still part of the game to deal three damage to the opponent. It does have counterplay against these sideboard Searing Bloods on the Ryan side, though. Last question. They're, remember, the deck lists are face up because we're in the elimination rounds. There are two ensnaring bridges in Ryan Ferry's sideboard, and if you're on Sam's side, does that affect how you're going to sideboard here? I feel like ensnaring bridge is more for some other matchups where it, it, it could be coming in here. The Reclamation Sage is a good hedge against that. Yeah. if you Because if he lands a bridge with no cards, your only out would be Noble Hierarchs otherwise. Right. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Uh, most likely Ryan would win those games if you get into a position where you have bridge and nothing is attacking. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure that bridge is for this matchup, but it might come in. It gets pushed back by Thalia, which is really awkward. Right. 
Also, just this is a damage race. Drawing that card can be a huge problem. And Ryan is want to keep one two land hands. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Ryan does with this. Mm -hmm. Now, in Ryan's sideboard, you mentioned these three Searing Bloods seem pretty great. Um, other things I would ask about, uh, Deflecting Palm to try to race, Destructive Revelry for Aether Vials, Exquisite Firecraft, they're all a little situational, but do any of them make sense? Palm is an okay card for racing, though it is the kind of card that in a damage race, especially because of Kite Sail Freebooter, can get stuck in your hand. Right. And it can get stuck in your hand in a way where Sam sees it with Freebooter, takes something else, and then Meddling Mage is your Palm if that one's still in. Um, there's a lot of stuff to Meddling Mage in this matchup, so you know maybe Sam is moving lighter off of that one. In general, um, Deflecting Palm, not great in matchups where creatures tend to be 2-2s two and 3-2s. Three or 3-3s, three rather. Right. At that point, I guess if you're saving yourself, ideally you're going to hit a 3-3. Three three, so you're, it's this card that you're hoping is Lightning Helix, mm -hmm. but is actually a lot less. And you just would rather have one mana action in yeah. that kind of situation. Yeah, the cards I'm expecting Ryan to sideboard out here would be Skullcrack to be the first one to go. Mm -hmm. um, on the draw, Eidolon on the Great level is quite poor. Right. Trying to convince me that um, Deflecting Palm would be better than Boros Charm. It's not Ooh. likely. Yeah, Boros Charm is just great all the time. And looks like I believe we have a mulligan from Sam. So Sam, I'm going to try a six-card hand here. So at StarCityGames.com, Commander 18, the next set here coming out from Wizards of the Coast. The Commander 2018 edition now is available for pre-order. Four different Commander de pre-constructed decks available for sale. We can one at a time or a set of all four of them. You can get that order and guarantee your copy today. Now they will ship August 10th as that's when the set is out for retail. A lot of sweet new stuff for Commander fans here. Always fun when these ones roll around. It's always interesting when some of cause some of these cards can be legal. I believe it's in Legacy, right? Yeah, I haven't gone too thoroughly over things. I don't know if there's anything for Legacy here, but there are some really sweet, wacky designs for Commander fans. Yeah, and that's really what the set's about. Frankly, it's upsetting when a Commander card is good <laughs> in Legacy. What's <laughs> your name, Nemesis? Huh? I don't even or like is that. Is that conspiracy or commander? It's commander. I, I don't even like baleful Strix, man. Well, that card <laughs> is that. Is that <laughs> that card's <laughs> dumb? I was like, I feel like I feel like we covered a open recently where you had an opinion on a baleful <laughs> Strix. Telver of Secrets versus baleful Strix. Yeah, I like that gameplay. I think they should print more baleful Strixes. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make it modern legal, whatever. Yeah, it's, that would only improve my matchups. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing about it is um, you can play a legacy blue deck with Baleful Strix, be really good against the Delver Secrets decks and much, much worse against the combo decks. Or you can choose to care about the mirror. Gravener has mulligan to five. He kept his five. Now, this is the kind of five that I actually like from humans. I believe it's a one land Aether Vial five card hand, which can play. Yeah, these hands can be very high velocity. And that's what we'll start out doing off Cavern of Souls. Actually, looks like we do have a second land. And we'll get Goblin Guide in from Ryan. Sam, it's Kite Sail Freebooter on top. A second land that, that gets to be a little heavy on mana sources. You don't want to really draw really more lands at all. Ryan, it's scryed a land to the bottom, though, on that scry. No, I'm just kidding. We get Champion of the Parish and Kite Sail Freebooter out of Sam. So this is actually a great start. Now, he's only down to, I think, one card left, but so far, so good. And we'll see what Ryan has held on to. We have another Goblin Guide, a Monastery, second Monastery, a Monastery Swift Spear to go with the Goblin Guide, Searing Blaze, Lightning Helix, a land, and, and, then, and bridge. then the Ensnaring Bridges have come in. I think that the Searing Blaze is the best card in here by a fairly wide margin. Yeah, if you don't take it, Ryan's almost certain to fire that off next turn. Kind of have to have a plan around this bridge. Ryan will now have a decision to make whether or not he helixes the Freebooter or that Champion. The Freebooter gets back the Blaze, but if Champion can grow to a 4-4, then he can't get past it anymore. Sam just on one card in hand. You could just see Ryan commit those creatures, make an attack with the 2-2s this turn. 
At that point, you're just almost lightning helixing upstairs. Right. If the plan long term is bridge, do you really care about a champion of the parish? Not immediately. Goblin Guide will attack. Top card of Sam is Mantis Rider. His other card is Militia Bugler, which means Sam's going to draw Mantis Rider. He'll have no plays next turn. Yeah, a couple threes will be stranded. Yep. And I wonder, now that he knows that, he knows his champion won't grow, he might trade it. Because, you know, if he's committing to taking two here, he's committing to two more next turn. Yeah. In the end, took the damage off Goblin Guide. He's definitely not happy to be drawing this Mantis Rider. Not only because he's doing nothing next turn, because the writing is on the wall with that ensnaring bridge. Sam does not have the pressure to really get under the bridge. So fetch shock for fairies. Didn't play any creatures pre-combat, so we might be looking at lightning helix. And we will, and Ryan will go ahead and get that freebooter off the table, getting taking back his searing blaze. And he's challenging Sam to make two humans next turn, which Sam's not going to be able to do. Right. He will, in fact, make zero humans. Right. Now the question is whether or not Ryan can trigger landfall on this Searing Blaze. Yeah, we did not see another land earlier. There's I one. I saw a land there, though. And that's going to be real tough for Gravener. And he's still been hanging on to some one-mana creatures. Might see Swift Spear into Searing Blaze here. I think that's exact. You're right. He's debating with on one drops. That's actually just going to be Goblin Guide. We'll go Goblin Guide into Searing Blaze. Three to the champion. Three to Sam. Upstairs. Down to 13. This attack will put him to nine. Suppose it doesn't matter much if Sam draws two lands off of Goblin Guide triggers. Not anymore. Especially revealing Noble Hierarch. That's that's no land at all. Sam down to nine. At this point, Ryan's not even interested in casting that ensnaring bridge. Yeah, he seems to have the game rolled up and as bridge kicker. There were chances for Sam here on this mold of five. Ryan gave him a goblin guide. If these goblin guides had hit lands, maybe Sam could have gotten back in this, but now things are slow. Here's Militia Bugler. Kite Sail Freebooter and Reflector Mage are the choices. He'll go for Freebooter so that he has something to cast. Yeah. And we see Monastery Swift Spear uh, and Snaring Bridge will have to be the card he takes. Right, and land, I think Bloodstained Mire. So actually, with two Goblin Guides in play, Sam has stabilized. The 2-3 Bugler does some good blocking. Yeah. Ryan will make the Swift Spear, but is he just going to have to pass? He, he might have a game. If he didn't draw a spell, his attacks aren't very good. You know, you can turn – your attack is good for some damage because the right. Freebooter is not a good blocker. You just lose one creature to the Bugler. That's fine. Horizon Canopy for Gravener. He'll draw a card. Cavern of Souls. Now, Gravener can't sit around too long. If Ryan Fairies draws a removal spell – he can take back this ensnaring bridge and cast it. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Mantis Rider, Noble Hierarch here. Yeah, the Mantis Rider, that, that's a five turn clock. Yeah. Swing for four, Ryan to 16. And he's not planning on blocking with the Freebooter, so he just decides to send it. Really the same as Exalting, and, you know, Ryan might be sitting on a removal spell to aim at that Mantis Rider, too. I'll go to 15. If Ryan draws a removal spell, do you think, is it at Mantis Rider or is it at Freebooter at this point? I'm feeling like he wants to get that bridge. I think so, too. If Sam was at 6, I mean, a burn spell might even go upstairs, but at 9, I, I want to hide up. I want to hide behind this bridge for a bit if I'm on Ryan Ferry's side. Right. Yeah, 9 is a pretty big number. That takes 3 spells. Ryan down to 1 card. He'll be drawing up to 2. There's not too many cards that can get stuck in Ryan's hand. I feel like that last card's probably a land, given that he cracked that fetch land, and he would want that landfall for a Searing Blaze. Sure. That Bugler hitting Freebooter, a big find for Sam Gravener. It's put him back into the game. Mm -hmm. He also just being a 2-3. <laughs> yeah. Some good text on that card. Yeah, Sam's got a good team of Vigilance creatures with three toughness. <laughs> and 
And now on Ryan Ferry's side, trying to see just what we have. Got some kind of spell. Rift Bolt. He'll target Kite Sail Freebooter. He gets back his bridge. This was interesting. So there was some tension there. You, I think what you're trying to say is yeah. you could suspend that and then go to your turn. You hit the Freebooter to get your bridge back. The concern is having a Rift Bolt on suspend leaves it vulnerable to Meddling Mage. Yeah. Now this line leaves him vulnerable to Meddling Mage as well. Yeah, I can just name Bridge. But I think you're right. Gravener's going to swing in for five, but Gravener drew another land, so we're safe for ensnaring Bridge, and the game's going to pause with <laughs> Ryan at ten and Gravener at nine. And then the game becomes all about whether Gravener has that Reclamation <laughs> Sage bordered in. Yeah, he's got to find it before Fairies finds three burn spells. There's Ensnaring Bridge. Fairies says go. I suppose Gravener could draw more noble hierarchs and eventually get to a point where he can make good attacks, though just the odds of Ryan not finding lethal burn before that's a factor are well, pretty low. I think actually Ryan's ground creatures would have that covered. So even if you had four noble hierarchs, they turn into four fives, and Ryan could just put the whole team in front of it and then be like, right. all right. Yeah, it's a lot of noble hierarchs. Yeah. <laughs> Sam down to six. Ryan's other card was a lightning bolt. So one out of three burn spells complete. Ryan passes. And Ryan's been through a good amount of his lands and his creatures. Yeah. There's not too many dead draws left. Kite Sail Freebooter from Sam. In response, another bolt. Sam's down to three, and one more burn spell will send Ryan to the finals. And he has an uncracked worded foothill, so it can even be a searing blaze. Sure, and yeah, Ryan keeping it for that reason. Does this card do it? Not yet. Sam taps Aether Vial, but only has lands. Phantasmal image picked up. This could bugle into something. Sure. Casts it. Militia bugler. Do we have a reclamation stage? We have a meddling mage. I don't think we've seen a lava spike this game. So meddling mage on lava spike could be reasonable. Just, you're, you're, at this point, we're saying, what burn <laughs> What burn spell are you most likely oh, to draw? Oh, oh. I mean, yeah, that's probably the play. Here's meddling mage from Sam Grabner. And he's doing the same math. He's yeah. looking at the graveyard. What could you draw? What have you not cast yet? Uh, I don't think we've seen. I haven't seen a Boros charm. I don't think. All right. Well, we'll pick one of them and go from there. <laughs> Ugh. So Ryan, Ryan's cracking a fetch land in response. Is that where we're at? Does he just have Searing Blaze for lethal here? <laughs> and Lightning Helix. That's a pretty good one. We haven't used any of those. No, he's used one of them. Right. But I guess if he's wondering what cards Ryan cut, there's no way Ryan cut any Lightning Helixes. Right. Well, here's Lava Spike. See? And should have named the Lava Spike, but... <laughs> hadn't seen any of those. Ryan Ferries with the Ensnaring Bridge sideboard plan. Success.